Hi, I'm Leah and I'm going to show you how to build the beautiful bow box. So I'm going to grab in the die sets. So you can see the dies that I am using as we go through. And I'm going to start by building the internal box. So for that I have two of these die cuts. Now on the die set that is here, so it's your largest die on the die set. And we're going to stick them basically back to back to form our box. So as always, first of all, we're going to fold on all of our score lines, give them a good burnish, including the glue tabs as well. Same with the second one. Now I'm doing this so that I've got the kind of good side on the outside of the box. Um, it depends on how you want to do this. You could do it the other way around. If you're planning on leaving the box kind of just within the exterior box, you could do it so the good side is on the inside since that's the side you're going to see the most or you could then line this so you've got the good side on the outside and you line the inside, whichever is your preference for this one. So let's get this glued together. A little bit of glue around the edges and then a good bit across the middle and then we just put the two pieces together so they're on opposite sides you should have four sides basically if you have any less than four sides then you need to rotate the other piece slightly okay just make sure that it's all nicely grabbed and then we can go around and glue the glue tabs on the sides We're just pulling the cut edge and that score line together just holding it for a moment while it grabs be kind to your glue don't move on too quickly okay and then the next one so same again make sure that your cut line and your score line have met nicely you can run your finger along it it should feel nice and smooth you shouldn't have any overhanging edges the more precise this is the easier it's going to be for the box to go together and for it to fit inside the exterior box as well next one then and same again just make sure it's all nice and even along the edge I do love how quickly Deluxe grabs and makes the uh, assembling boxes nice and quick for us. Okay, last one. The studio is creaking and settling around me today. Okay. There we go. So that is the exterior box done. I'm going to put that to one side just to allow it to dry. And we're going to move on to the exterior box. So basically we've done this part here and now we're going to work on the craft part. So we're, the box that we're building is actually based on this just to make it a little bit easier as well. So I have already decorated my panels just to make this a little bit quicker today. So I have first of all three of the large panel which is down here. Um, so one of these is going to be the front here, one is on the back, and the last one is on the top up here. I had to really think then where that was. So there's the three panels that we're going to be using for that. Then I have two of the smaller panel, which is this one here, and that's going to be at the very top and the very bottom. And then I have two side panels, or two of the larger side panels, I should say, um, which are over here on your die set. So there is two different sides because they do angle in different ways. And then I have two of the corner panels. Uh, where are they? Da, 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 da. Here, obviously, right in the middle. And then lastly, I have one of the hinge brackets as well, which is down here on your die set. So that's the basis of the box. It looks more complicated than it is, I promise. So let's start with our front panel. And I'm gonna fold along my score lines. And this is going to glue to our two side panels. I need to make sure I've got the right angle on this. So we're going that way and that way. Very important to double check this. Not so much of an issue, um, I guess, if you haven't decorated your panels, because you can always flip it around. But since I've put the panels on already, I need to make sure this is going the right way. Yeah, that way. 
sometimes it's easier to decorate your panels first and sometimes it isn't. Nope. Nope. That side. Yeah. I'm following the angle of this one basically so you can see what I'm doing. So it needs to be that way to go on this side. It will make sense, I promise. The uh, pack does have full instructions for you as well so you can follow those if you're unsure like me. <laughs> it's always fun when we come back to uh, make these for a launch video because generally we do the packing, the packaging samples kind of, you know, three, four, five, sometimes even six months before we get to launch a product and then uh, we have to remember how it all went together, which isn't always as easy as you might think. The glamorous side of uh, being a crafter. Okay, so there's our first two side pieces in. So now we're gonna need a base piece to cover from there. It's basically like a giant 3D jigsaw. I'm just putting it all together in the right order and not upside down, preferably. So this is gonna glue onto here and then onto there and then we're gonna have the next piece on here. So hopefully you can see how this is coming together. I'm gonna to start with the base piece. Again, I want to make sure that I'm lining up my cut edge and my score lines. So you've got a nice, neat edge. Press that into place. It's nice and easy to be able to pinch this from the inside. So it's at this point that you really do need to uh, be kind to your glue because you're going to start pulling this at different angles. You want to make sure that you do have a, a good bond on there before you move on, she says, moving on possibly a little bit too soon, but we'll see. So glue along the sides and then pull that into place. And again, make sure you've got a nice neat edge along there. Just hold that in place for a moment. Do make sure as well that you get right into the corner and pinch that edge as well. And then we'll do the same on the other side. So a little bit of glue along there. So this time um, we have built this using um, craft card for the base, which is, I wanna say 250 GSM. I think, or is it 280? Fairly sturdy, anyway. But we do have um, other versions of these around here that I can see have been made with classic card because you're layering them up with your patterns and pieces on the outside as well. Obviously, you're gonna be adding to that GSM with every layer that you add. So you can definitely do this with classic if you want to. I'm waiting now for Cam to confirm for me. Are we 280, is it 250? Got to find it first. Okay, and there's that piece in. So now I can put my back panel on, which is going to sit like so. And obviously, we've got then the glue tabs to go inside as well. It's 280. 280, thank you very much. So, yeah, it's a fairly sturdy cardstock uh, craft, which means that this is going to be, I mean, you can see this is very sturdy as a base, but it's no less sturdy than some of the others that have all of those mats and layers on. So if you want to have all of the color options that we have in Classic uh, to build your beautiful bow box, that's definitely an option for you. Right, next bit on. So this sort of starts to get a bit tricky because uh, You've got to kind of reach right inside to hold your glue tabs in. So you might need to uh, start leaving it a little bit longer for these glue tabs to grab because you're not going to be able to press them quite as much. Okay, and then I can go in with the sides. So a bit of glue all the way along that glue tab. 
And as always with this, you know, we say every time, less is definitely more with wet glue. You don't need a lot. You definitely don't want to make the glue tab too soggy by applying too much glue. You'll find it takes a really, really long time to dry if you do that. And also you'll get bits squeezing out the edges like that. Which you want to try and avoid, if at all possible. And you'd be surprised how little you need to actually get this to bond really nicely. Okay, now for the slightly trickier one. Probably should have grabbed out a precision nozzle glue, but we're going for it now. I'm committed. Now if you have precision nozzles at home, do you only use precision nozzles on your glue now or do you switch? I'm very much a switcher. If I'm doing very fine detail stuff, I'll grab a precision nozzle glue. And if I'm doing larger areas, I grab our normal nozzles. But Karen just uses the precision nozzle all the time. She doesn't switch at all, which I think is crazy. Okay, so next up then, we're gonna put the hinge into the back. Ooh, let's bring that into shot. So you can see on here, the hinge has a full piece and then one that is not like a glue tab. So the glue tab is gonna sit under the inside here. And then the full piece actually sits on the outside, which is why you have that full layer. I'm gonna give this a bend along the score line. I'm actually gonna bend it both ways just so it moves nice and freely. And then I'm gonna stick this just inside here, like so. So again, glue all the way. Make sure you do get glue right to the edges of your glue tabs as well. You'll find it uh, holds everything just a little bit crisper if you do. Now for this, you want to make sure that your score line is actually above the cut edge because you want this to be able to fold as a hinge. If your score line was too low, it wouldn't be able to bend back like this and then you'd struggle to actually open the lid of the box. So just be careful putting that one in. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that piece to one side. I'm gonna build the lid and then we're gonna put the two pieces together. So we've done this part of the box. Now we're gonna work on this part here. So very similar pieces to what we've already used. I have the top panel, first of all. So this is kind of uh, front and center for your gift box. So as you're putting your decorations on, if there's one that you know looks better than the others, this is the one I would put it onto. This is the panel that I would use that one for. Then we have the lid. Which way around do I need this to be? That way, okay. So I've um, put a drop shadow onto my layers, so I'm just trying to make sure, if at all possible, that the shadows are all going in the same direction. I can't guarantee that I have uh, managed that, but we'll see. We'll have a look at the end once it's uh, all together and see how well I've succeeded in my mission. And the one that I'm making today is actually based on this box, which Karen did for the packaging. And she cut all the pieces, so uh, she needs uh, all of the glory for this, nothing to do with me. I'm just putting it together. Okay, so I'm gonna put this piece onto here, first of all, like so. And again, you wanna make sure your score line and your cut edge are meeting. So nice and neat edges, this isn't a folding piece. Sometimes you might find that they don't sit together straight when you first put them together so you might have to kind of anchor the edges and then move the middle into the right place. That's not unusual. So with the way that your die cutting machine cuts sometimes adds a little bit of a wibble or sometimes the cardstock just curves ever so slightly. Okay, now I'm going to put on checking. So I have that piece, I have that piece, and now my corners are going to go on. And it doesn't actually look like they fit, but honestly they do. 
when I was looking at the corners, I was like, they're not going to fit. That's not going to be long enough to fit on there. But it does, trust me. Even if I don't believe it myself. So, corner onto the edge. Press that in. And then we can pull the back piece down to meet that. I think this box has some interesting angles to it because it has a two panels on the front and only one on the back and you've got those kind of interesting triangular shapes at the top and bottom. It makes it look a little bit different. And I like the fact that the inner box, you can kind of make it pop up. Very clever. As you can tell, it's a Toby die set. Very well engineered, as always. So, just because my two glue tabs overlap here, I'm just gonna make sure that I've got glue onto both of them. So I've got enough glue under this piece to glue the two together. And then we can put all of this down in one go. This very helps to be able to uh, stand it on the desk. Okay, hold that in place just for a second. Perfect, so now onto the back. We've got these two glue tabs on the side and then the larger glue tab. I'm actually gonna tuck these in. Oh, be kind to your glue, people. Don't move on as quickly as I am. I'm gonna tuck these under the bigger glue tab, like so, just to make it a little bit neater and easier to stick all of that then onto the hinge. So same again, I'm gonna make sure I've got glue all the way over that large glue tab. so that it does glue to the underside of the little one. And then glue all the way along there. And then it's just a case of lining all of this up. And then holding it into place. So this is where you're gonna to have to be a little bit more patient, a little bit more careful, because if you want to press this from the inside, you're gonna to have to open the box to be able to do that. Okay, there we go. This is where we uh, add the elevator music. Talk about yourselves, yeah, exactly. While we sit here and literally watch glue dry. Is it more or less exciting than watching paint dry? I don't know. I've been having to watch paint dry for a while at the moment, so. You, maybe glue. you can tell us. Yeah, glue is more exciting. It's quicker. It's quicker. This is very true. It is quicker. I don't think you could uh, finish painting a room and it would be dry as quickly as we do things. No. No. Okay. So that is our finished box, or the external box, as it were. Well, almost finished. We're missing the very important part here, the bow. So I have my bow components. Except one, there it is, it's still in the bag as always. Always the smallest piece that gets left behind. So if I bring back in my die set here, I have two of the large loops for the bow, which are here, two of the tails. I have this piece, which has two score lines in the center, which is down here. And then I have the bow wrap, which is here. And then the last piece that I have is the tab that's gonna pull our internal box out through our surprise box. And I've just realized there was a note on this bag, needs slit cut into layer. Okay, brilliant. And I have forgotten to do that. Yes, right here. You see here, there should be a slit here for the tab to come through. So we're just gonna carry on and pretend that I did that because I'm not gonna cut a whole new one. It's fine. Do as I say, not as I do. And this is what happens when we prep these things a long time ahead of time and then we get changes made to the dies. 
Okay, so I'm gonna assemble my bow. I have basically given these two bow loops a good curve because you need them to pinch together into the center like so. And ideally, you don't want them to have like a harsh folded line down this side, so you need to really give them a curve. You can wrap them around something circular, so if you have like a spatula or one of our big blending brushes, something like that, kind of mold it around that curve to help pull that together. So I'm just pinching those two ends together. Be kind to your glue, let it dry, yeah. This is where it's handy to have a, an assistant and I don't have one today. It's fine, we got this. We can, we can watch the glue dry. I mean, to be fair, it is, you know, we're really stressing that glue, making it hold that curve together. Okay, I think we're good. Comment below if you think that's going to hold. <laughs> okay, same again on the second one. Pinch that together. And again, be kind, give it time. <sighs> yes, watching, watching glue dry. Okay. So our two bows then are going to join it together. I'm going to join them that way around like so. So a little bit of glue across the center of here. Just like that. And then this piece basically wraps around the center just to hide all of our gluing so you can't tell. I love it when we've got a little piece like this that's going to hide any messy edges or bits that haven't quite lined up properly. Not that you probably have that. Okay, no. that goes into there. And then it's just going to fold around the back. Like so, just so it finishes off the bow. And then from there, we can pop it onto our tails. So I'm actually gonna overlap these, I think. Let's see, yes. Just slightly. And then I'm gonna sit the bow center just onto there. And this really will be a give it time because you're kind of holding the uh, bow loops out of the way. That's gonna take a second, so put that there. I'm gonna talk about this piece. So you have a double score line in here, and it is important that you do fold on both of those score lines because you need there to be, this is basically where this piece is gonna sit through to hold the box closed. So you need to make sure that that double score line is giving you that extra gap for this to slot into, okay. We're good. So for double score lines, I often find it easier to use a paper crease or something like that to actually fold along each line, especially when they're this close together because trying to just fold those manually is not that easy. So just, I like to put the edge of my creaser just onto the score line and then fold over it. And once you've got them roughly in place, you can then go and pinch them properly. So you end up with that ridge, and then the same on the other side. If I can see the score line, there it is. And again, just pinch that into place, like so. So that should then give you just that tiny little extra gap for the band to sit through. So this is all gonna go onto the front of our box here. So we're gonna sit this down first of all with that. Hopefully you can just, maybe not. Maybe see, it just stands up ever so slightly. 
and then the bow basically sits at the top so it's kind of hidden it's a bit of a hidden working again here we love hidden workings if we can hide mechanisms and how things are magic and clever we will always do that so bow can go on nice and centrally And then glue onto the back of here, so just on the two sides, because the center part is not going to touch the front of the box. And let's get this nice and central on here. And then press that into place. Okay, last bit then. So bringing back our internal box. As you can see, on one that has the slit cut into it, not mind that I've forgotten to do it, we have this band that comes from the inner box and you can basically use this to pull the box in and out. That's the idea, that's why it has the slit built in. So make sure when you are cutting your pieces that you do cut the slit into your layer. So what I'm going to do is attach this, so I hope you can see on here, it's just attached to the back of the box. So once I've popped this into here, whoop, I've got this already creased and folded. So this part is going to sit just on the back of that. Just like so. Try and make sure it is as central as you can possibly get it because obviously it needs to line up with the slip that's cut into here and then obviously going into the tab down the front as well. And then this would feed through there and go into the front of your bow. So I'm just going to tuck it underneath and show you the real one. Ta da! Let me just do a here's what I made earlier. So here is the finished box. You've got your tab coming through from under here, through there, and then as you close the box, you tuck this back under the bow in the front, which then holds your beautiful bow box closed for you as well. So hopefully you have learned to do what I say, not as I do from this, and it has shown you how to put together your beautiful bow box. Thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.